Hello, Ryori Fushimitsu here, and welcome to Let's Play Ape Escape 2 Part 6. So this time around, this is that thing I was telling you about in the last video, where you could go, where you could put 10 coins into it, and you hit it, and you could win a prize. It's most of the time it's giving me monkey fables right now, since there's hundreds of those in the game, and most of them are multiple parts, so it makes you, it's trying to give you a reason to want to keep playing the game. So things that people play this game are going to be overly interested in, in what you call, like, fables and, like, old timely Aesop fables or things like that from a long time ago, people probably already knew way before they played this game. Or if you didn't, you probably had some serious issues then. They're much worse than not reading the rest of the stories in this game. <laughs> so you could win all sorts of stuff in this game. Sometimes you could win more money, sometimes you could win... What else is there you could win? You could win... You could win music CDs of music from the game, you could win, like, VHS tapes or the cutscenes for the game, you could also win... There's so much stuff you can win. You can even win mini games from this. Once you clear certain levels of the game, it's actually possible to win certain mini games. Mini games are a whole nother world in themselves. As I said in the first part, mini games in this game aren't that good. This could go on a very long time. Most of the time, you're not going to win any good stuff, anyways. It's way too random and too. And it wasn't that well done, really. I think they did it much better in Ape Escape Pre, where you could actually choose what you want to buy rather than just go to the random thing and just randomly get what, whatever is there kind of thing. It's very random, too. So I often go there to win more lives or to increase my health or something like that. And you could spend, like, a whole hour there and you would never get any of that stuff. It's even more random than the, than the Mega Man games. Like, I've been playing a lot of the Mega, classic Mega Man games again, where you could... Or you go to like some of the levels in the game with so many enemies, you keep killing them and grinding for stuff. Most of the time, they're not going to give you what you want, or you're not going to get anything useful or anything like that. So now we're in the level, I believe this level is like Enter the Monkey or something. Yeah, this is supposed to be like Enter the Dragon or something like that. I like to think like Enter the Dragonfly, like Spyro 4, Enter the Dragonfly. This level kind of does remind me a little bit of Spyro 4. There was a level like this in Spyro 4. Spyro 4 was a decent game, but it still could have been way better. Definitely not as good as the PS1 Spyro games. And I'll, and I'll, and you see, there was just a lot of monkeys right there up front. And as you see, I just caught all of them within a few seconds, or caught most of them within a few seconds. I think that might be a record for the most amount of monkeys I've captured within a short amount of time. And oh, look! Look what we see in this, inside this Buddhist temple. And of course, they're not going to give us this whole temple just to have Pachi hiding in it. Of course, there's going to be a lot more stuff for us to find in this temple. There's going to be like a, we're going to have to hit these switches, flip them downwards, and we're going to find like some hidden secrets and some... We're going to find some hidden secrets. Of course, there's going to be monkeys down under here. There's only real hidden secrets in this game are monkeys. There are really very many. Because I said before, there aren't really any collectibles in this game. Unlike the first game where you could find stuff in levels, this game doesn't really have any, any of that. It's pretty Spectre Coins or anything like that, so you don't have to worry about that. At least it gives us one last thing to look for. Spectre Coins kind of were slightly annoying in the first game, considering how many they are in total, and it contributes to the game's overall progress. I guess, it makes, I guess I'm on the part of this game. It actually makes it easier to 100% complete this game, then. But of course, also getting 100% complete involves getting gold medals on every single time attack challenge, which I still have not yet done to this day with any, re with any Ape Escape game. I don't even play time attack that much in Ape Escape 3 because it actually, because Ape Escape 3 lets you play the levels again once you've completed them in free play mode, which I thought was really good they did that. So you see, there's a really aggressive monkey here, like a really aggressive red pants monkey. They, most of them have Japanese names. No, some of them just follow Japanese names. Some of them are like named after like Kung Fu stars or like action warriors kind of thing. You know, like, we're always going to see Jackie Chan parodies in here. But what would a parody of this be about Jackie Chan, right? Of course, this game is like filled with so many, um, you know, pop culture episodes. Of course, we're first going to have to capture Jackie Chan the monkey at some point in this level. And Johnny, I wonder if that's a reference to Johnny Cage or something like that, or... <laughs> like, I, I'm... And of course, we're still pitted against the familiar old enemies. Even though we're, even though we're like, far away from the rest of the world, we're far away from America, we're far away from Europe and all those other places we were before, but yet we're still pitted against the same kind of enemies we've seen ever since the first level of this game. Sure, they tried mixing up a bit by painting some of them blue to make it to make them look different, but we're really all just the same enemies in this game as we've seen since the first game of the game. Probably because Spectre had a, had a tight budget, probably. Probably couldn't afford to get the most amount of enemies or afford to get a good army. 
I don't know, I don't know, you know, how much does it cost to build all this stuff that Spectre built? It must have cost a fortune for all this. And Spectre is just a monkey from the monkey park. How could he have packed, got so much money that way? How could, he have, how could he have got so much money by doing all that? I don't know. You steal money from the monkey park as he was leaving? I don't know. I don't know how he got. Maybe he robbed banks or something like that. He's likely he did rob the banks, considering how many monkeys he had and how aggressive some of those monkeys. You just thought that other monkey was aggressive. I bet he has a whole army of them that could probably rob banks. You kind of see him do that in the third game a little bit. I keep talking in the third game because it's just like this, but it's like to fit, but it's even more definitive of what an Ape Escape game should be. They see there's a monkey hiding on top of that thing. It looks like now we're in some sort of like, um, I don't know, this kind of reminds me of a restaurant or something like that that I would go to in a major city. I know, that's just from experience. Look at that. We have to, they, they, they're, they're so cheap. I don't think the Skyflyer works the same way in this game as it did in the first game. The first game, if you just stay put and, and launch the Skyflyer, you could travel higher. But if you jump, you could travel further. Or, but not necessarily higher. I think they changed it in this game, so it's kind of the same regardless of what you do. That was just them being lazy, I think. Or they could probably figure out ah, kids are lazier. You see, if kids in 2003 are a lot lazier than they were in 1999. And so, yeah, because kids, you know, the kids get lazier and lazier as time goes on. Why well, do you think so many games are made to be so easy and simple and straightforward these days? That's the reason why I don't like very many modern games. They seem to lack challenge, I think. It's, a lot of the time it doesn't even feel like you're playing a game. A lot of times it just feels like you're playing an overly decorated movie. I find a lot of the games on the PS4 and Xbox One and all the newer systems are like that. So that's the reason why I never owned any of those systems. I could just live off these classics and I'd, you know, I'd be good for every set for life pretty much just off these classics. And look at that, there's a fast monkey. Again, we always thought it was going to be fast monkeys. At least they catch the, the blue, the dark blue pants monkeys are always the fastest. There. Now we only have three more monkeys remaining. This level actually, I think, has... Because like Skip's saying, every level started off only a few monkeys. And I realized the levels went on, we had to capture more and more and more. And now we're at a point where we only have, like... We had 15 monkeys, I think, to capture in the level began. Which it seems quite a lot compared with the first levels were, but we caught a lot. But that's not really saying much. Considering the fact we caught all of them just like that off the, off the bat off the top, you just caught so many of them, and they and they got captured like, you know, like flies, they, they've dropped like flies almost. It's almost like me when I played the original Battle Arena to Sheendon about a year ago, and I just defeated all the enemies in that game, defeated all the contestants that game easy. But then when I got to the last one, it kicked my ass kind of thing. <laughs> kind of like the Emperor in Revenge of the Sith when he went against all those Jedi and he killed all of them off in a few seconds except for Mace Windu. <laughs> So you see how Monkey was enjoying his nice time on the throne, Ming. I wonder if that's a reference to the Ming Dynasty or something. Like, wasn't there something called the Ming Dynasty at some point? I wonder if that's supposed to be a reference to that. I don't know. In fact, there's so many references in this game. I bet a lot of them are to obscure things, stuff that I would never know, or no normal person would ever get that, or... The problem with having games that make out that overuse like, obscure references to things, they would never really know what it was or what... And it, it, does the reference really have the same effect on us if it, if no one knows what it is or you know it is a reference or not? And of course, they're like, I'm just glad that, that Pipachi is back. Yeah, we rescue Pipachi. Yeah, big deal. We, we, we're obviously going to find him in a future level, right? <laughs> this is Riari Fushimitsu, signing out.